While we've been focusing on all the tweets and all the headlines, the White House for the last year has been rolling back regulations and they're taking quite a toll when it comes to the environment, nursing homes, to even the food we eat. All that and more, it's being impacted. Then Republicans, they passed their tax plan. The question is, in less than a year, will they run on it or will they run away from it come November? Also, President Trump bucking yet another Washington tradition. He's skipping the Kennedy Center honors after bailing on the White House Correspondents' Dinner. We'll explain why this is yet another example of the president turning his back on bipartisanship. Evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French, and a belated Merry Christmas to some, and Merry Holidays to everybody else. Now, we begin tonight with President Trump's war on regulations. Now, beyond what regulations cost to businesses, repealing those regulations it also comes with a cost, potential cost to your health, our environment, and, very arguably, your bottom line. And for more, let's bring in our senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman. And Andrew, I think the general public is going to be surprised by the scope of it. They've heard little bits here and there, but when you add it up, it's a conscious pattern, and it's something we haven't seen before. And the breadth of which really impact almost every aspect of American life or will. And from a purely scoreboard standpoint, this Trump war on regulations is actually something of a promise kept. Trump campaigned on repealing regulations, and he has. And it's also one of the few areas where Trump has actually done better, at least numerically, than he intended to do when he was talking on the campaign trail. Now, he took a victory lap on this front last week. Within our first 11 months, we canceled or delayed over 1,000 500 planned regulatory actions instead of eliminating two old regulations for every one new regulation we have eliminated 22 22 that's a big difference but when it comes to regulations it's the what that's being repealed that matters even more than how many have been repealed and some of Trump's regulatory rollbacks could have impacts you've not only not considered, but some you might not even have heard about or, frankly, just plain forgotten about. And there's a lot of them. Among them, a new rollback that will stop or restrict fines to be levied against nursing homes that violate rules, even when those violations lead to the deaths of nursing home residents. Hard to see how this will increase safety and care at nursing homes. Other rollbacks include the Education Department scrapping rules about how colleges and universities handle claims of sexual assaults. That happened earlier in the year before the Me Too movement gained steam. The FDA has slowed down the hiring of new meat and food inspectors, slowing recalls and adding to the risk that the foods we eat could actually kill us. Speaking of killing us, Congress and the White House earlier this year teamed up on a bill that did away with regulations preventing people with severe mental illnesses from buying guns. And remember, the pro-gun crowd insists that mass shootings are more a mental health issue than a gun control issue. This rollback relaxes both parts of that equation. Elsewhere, you probably remember the FCC's decision to reverse net neutrality rules, meaning service providers can favor some companies over others and create fast and slow lanes on the Internet. But you may have forgotten that earlier this year, regulations barring service providers from sharing your personal information with businesses and doing so without your knowledge or consent were overturned. So now your data can make them money whether you want it to or not. The real regulatory bullseye for the Trump administration has been on the environment, where 60 regulations have either been overturned or likely will be overturned soon. Among them, regulations aimed at making offshore oil drilling safer for workers and for the environment. Those rules were put in place after the Deepwater Horizon disaster in the Gulf of Mexico. The administration has also overturned regulations governing pollution emitted from power plants. Both the air we breathe and climate change concerns be damned, along with regulations li limiting methane emissions. And in fealty to the president's love of the coal industry, coal mines now have wider latitude to dump or spill their waste into rivers and streams. But get this, the administration is also looking to roll back regulations that protect coal miners from black lung. This is from a president who campaigned on his love of coal miners. The administration has also delayed new rules on nutrition labels because the need to sell more food apparently outweighs the need for people to manage what they eat and eat a healthier diet. Finally, to the war on consumer protection, the best example of the appointment of Mick Mulvaney to head the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, a department that was formed in the wake of the 2008 Great Recession. Instead of protecting consumers from banks, the Bureau's mission is now to smooth the regulatory process for bank protections, protections that many think might have prevented the crash and recession in the first place. And you might have forgotten about another key bit of consumer protection trashed by Congress in the White House, the ability for consumers to form class action suits against big banks instead forcing people into individual arbitration sessions. The result, likely fewer victories for consumers who will have to pay more out of their own pocket to challenge their banks. 
and far less of a reason for any bank to be responsive to the needs of its consumers to begin with. And Rich, we could have gone on and on with this list, but those are the headlines. And I'm very curious if the panel thinks a fraction of the public knows the scope of it. Let's bring him in. Jeannie Zeno, familiar face, professor of political science at Iona College and also senior advisor at the consulting firm Applied Techonomics. Dominic Carter, political journalist and author. And Andrew, who you already met, our senior political um, correspondent. All right, guys. Um, Listen, this is towards the end of the year. Things tend to slow down. The president, I know he's hard at work playing golf in Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> uh, I'm petty there. But that said, Jeannie, he campaigned saying, I'm for you, the middle class guy. Forget the PC stuff and everything. At the end of the day, I'm for you. We'll talk about taxes later on. It's going to hurt guys like me. It's going to help people like you. They're guaranteed, in any chapter of history, bad food's going to get by the FDA now because they don't have people inspecting it. It's an easy story to tell. Somebody's going to get really sick at one of these mines, or we're going to have a massive mine where something's going to collapse, and they were able to cut corners because all of a sudden those are the new rules. Another oil rig, God forbid, something will happen because now they can get away with it. Again, we're the media guys. They're easy stories to tell and to say cause and effect. Do you think it catches up with him or not? I think it's going to catch up with him, but I think it's going to be a little while. And, and to your point, I don't think people are following this story. We have a president who tweets and does so many outrageous things that stay in the headlines that all of these things that Andrew just laid out, which are so important, escape not only most people, but most of us because events are moving so quickly. He's always distracting people by these outrageous comments and things he's doing or other, or other people in the administration that it's hard to focus on these boring, then let's be honest, these are boring stories about deregulation. And let's be and, honest, we wouldn't be and, talking about this if it wasn't the last week of the year where things are slow. Slow down. Is that a session and he's not tweeting but like look a maniac. At the scope of this, Dominic. I'm talking, I'm just, note, we all have loved ones that have been in a nursing home or whatever. Now, if they die on the watch, they're giving less recourse to somebody if the death was preventable to hold the nursing home accountable. Inspecting food. How is this a bipartisan issue? I mean, we all know there's recalls, E. coli, all these other things, right? Now, they're not hiring people to do it, and they're making it harder for them to actually follow through. EPA, basically anything to do with the environment, yep. you know, getting rid of the whole thing. Mentally ill getting guns? That's a good idea. I can go on and on. These are not policy wonk, whatever. This is stuff that I think the average person says, wait a minute, a crazy person diagnosed getting a gun? Who thinks that's a good idea? And grandma dies in the nursing home and I can hold no one accountable? How's that looking out for me? The whole idea that they were going to drain the swamp there's a freeway from K Street, which is the lobbying street in Washington, directly to the White House. And this isn't Republican, Democrat. I'm just saying, I think this is easy to follow. Maybe I'm overestimating it, but it's crazy. It's crazy to everybody at this table. It may be crazy to the political insiders. But if you're working at a mine, isn't it all of a sudden, wait a minute, No. 2017 now? Mm -mm. If I get black lung, it's on me? Well, let, let me just tell you the way the president's going to spin it. He is a master at diversion. And shame on us, frankly, I'm speaking as a citizen right now, the American people, because continuing with the professor's point, he oftentimes on a daily basis dangles crazy personality here while we really should be watching what's going on here. That's what Andrew's report was really all about. Here's how he would spin it, and the masses will go for it just like red meat to the base. I'm cutting regulation to keep your jobs. No, what he really means is he's cutting regulations for his boys, for his guys that are rich owners of the nursing homes, for the people that own the, uh, coal, the coal mining companies at the expense of the workers. And you're right, we're going to have these tragedies over and over and over again, but he's going to get away with it because he's going to say he's doing it in the name of bringing jobs and then, back to America and expanding and jobs. And that brings up an important reminder. Lawmakers don't just come up with regulations out of whole cloth. They don't just decide to come up with new regulations. All of these regulations are based out of disasters or tragedies that have happened in the past. In the, in the hurricane that hit Florida this year, we had a nursing home that flooded over, and the nursing home was essentially responsible for the deaths of, I think, 13 or 14 yep. residents. We have these things on the books because of that. The mental Ill, mentally ill getting guns, Again, that might be the best example because 
we keep hearing after every mass shooting, it's not a gun issue, it's a, it's a mental health issue. So what's the rationale for allowing well, the mentally ill to get guns? Point, the Deepwater Horizon story you told. The idea that you're going to have an offshore rig police itself, by definition, they're trying to extract oil offshore here in the deepest waters possible to make the biggest profit. They're not exactly OSHA, right? Pardon the pun. So uh, where I'm going with this is there's a reason. It's like nobody wants to pay taxes, but there's a reason for it. It's like this. Now, there's one more. And this is why I think this stuff catches up with it. We did a story. Remember Wells Fargo when they were getting the directive branches all over the place, primarily out west, but it wasn't just it. Hundreds of thousands of people, middle class folks, were all of a sudden getting accounts open for them that they never asked to have opened because the bank had these quotas to say, you better make your numbers. So these people are getting hustled, charged taking money from them that they never even asked for. So what's the recourse? After everybody figured this all out, they said, okay, you guys can go after the banks. What just happened now was to say, no, you can't. They can rob from you, they can hustle you, they should know better than you, they're the bank. And by the way, you're gonna have to go in arbitration right now and we'll pick the judge, I mean the banks will, that'll look at the case. I, I know this sounds like we're in the weeds, but this is what's going on, I believe, if I can stand on my soapbox, when the government doesn't work for the people, the government works for the lobbyists and the self-interest. And it happens in every industry, every administration, I guess. But we've never seen this like this, Jeannie, where they're writing their own rules. And the worst part about it was he promised us when he ran for office that he was going to drain the swamp. Remember that? No more lobbyists and whatever else. It was a complete unadulterated lie. They've got access like nobody else. They don't even read what they ask. They basically put it in front of me and says, let's make it happen. And we knew this if you looked at his cabinet appointments. I mean, appointment after appointment were it's people who did not support the agencies in which they were going to lead. And we've seen that. And Andrew mentioned this. They want to get report. rid of the agencies. They want to get rid of them. Of, yeah. And unfortunately, I think what's going to happen is Andrew's right. These regulations follow disaster. But you know what? When these disasters occur, the president, to Dominic's point, is going to come out and say, oh, we'll hear handle it. We, we feel hor They're never going to go back and say this is a result of what we did. They're going to say that they'll handle it. And meanwhile, they have done a very traditional, the bidding of the traditional Republican Party, very much in keeping with what the base had wanted. So, you know, he's able to play both ends against the middle to present himself as not establishment and yet to fulfill the needs of the Republican yes. Party beautifully. Except I saw a little story in microcosm. It's always tough to draw, but in Utah today, Orrin Hatch, it was an embarrassing story here, the senior senator from Utah. Um, there was a, a piece that made him Utahan of the year. For he, all the wrong reasons. Right, but he thought, terrific, thank you so much for the honor. They want him to leave office because basically he did a major giveaway where bears use protected natural land in, in Utah um, that prior administrations had made sure was off limits for any development whatsoever. He led the charge to basically turn it over to the developers. They want him to leave. My point is, some of this stuff that serves narrow interest for certain industries, God, I, I want to be wrong, but we, we always have disasters, mm -hmm. sometimes man-made or natural. And then afterwards, we find out nobody was minding the store. It's going to happen. Oh, sure. I don't want to be right, but it's going to happen. And then they're going to turn around and say, wait, wait, who's looking out for us? That's supposed to be the company policing themselves. That's what we've learned in, you know, God knows how many years in this country Absolutely. that you can't trust basically, you know, the fox to guard the hen house. It's all sold under the umbrella of jobs. The better we make the, the environment for businesses, the more jobs they'll be able to create and the better off every American will be. And on some level, there's some validity to that argument. The problem is when the disaster impacts you, when, when, the, when the polluters wind up polluting your groundwater or your drinking water supply, or when the consumer protection rules are rolled back so that you get hit with a teaser mortgage rate, or you wind up paying 100 plus percent on a payday loan because the fine print is gone because they've changed that. It, it sounds good in, in general until it hits you in your pocketbook and all of these financial protections and all of these other protections will wind up impacting people, whether it's their environment, their jobs, their mm. lives, their credit, their homes. It, and I'll go one step further. Everybody in every business, especially on uh, when you're talking about na national industries, 
they'll factor in at a certain point. If I cap my downside where I'll produce a bad product, could be faulty, but the worst that I'm going to have to pay in penalties is X. It's still better for me to produce mm -hmm. potentially a faulty product here if my damages are X. Now, all I have to say is the folks in West Virginia should remember Massey Mines. Massey Mines, 30-something guys died there in the mines because they didn't follow any of the safety protections they were supposed to because basically they were the biggest campaign donor and everybody looked the other way. If the federal government now is saying, do whatever you guys think is right, we know the human condition and how it ends up. I'm just saying, I don't want to be right on this, but this is bad. First of all, it's immoral, but it's going to be really bad. And uh, Something I, I'm about glad foxes you and hen houses comes to mind, yeah. Rich. I'll abuse that analogy, too. All right, coming up next, taxes. Republicans got the plan through here, and everybody's saying it's a big victory, the biggest legislative one, if not one of the only ones, that the guy in the string got this year. But the question is, in November, will Republicans run on it or will they regret their vote? We'll debate that, whether it will help or hurt the GOP chances in the midterms right after this.